Hi, welcome to our setup demonstration of the new Linksys WRT1900AC. The screen you see is the initial setup screen that is accessed after you plug in the router at 192.168.1.1 on your home or small business network. The first step in setting up this router is to accept the terms by checking this box right here. You also have the option to skip the automatic setup and configure the router manually. I don't recommend that unless you have a specific situation that would require that. And in most situations, the automatic setup should be good enough. So I would recommend going through the process that we're about to demonstrate first. It takes just about a 30 seconds to 45 seconds for it to go through its initial detection of the internet. All right, the first screen that you're going to see is a screen that asks you to select whether future router updates will be installed automatically. We do want, in most cases, to have the router go ahead and download and install updates automatically so that we're up to date with current feature sets and, most importantly, the latest security updates from Linksys. Our next screen allows us to personalize the network by changing the network name um, and your password. Uh, this applies to both the 2.4 gigahertz side and the 5 gigahertz side of the network. We can have independently different names or we can make the network names the same. I recommend a robust password for the network. Anywhere from 12 to 15 characters is usually a good metric using a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. We're not going to change them for the purposes of this video, though. It then takes a few seconds to update the wireless settings. This screen allows us the opportunity to change the default router password, which I highly recommend. I recommend to use a different password for the router than is used for the wireless. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're simply going to change the password to test. And our router is set up. All the At this point, you should be able to access the internet, both via the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network uh, wireless network sides as well as from your connected uh, wired uh, PCs on the network. Let's, take, let's now take a look at something new. It's called the Linksys Smart Wi-Fi account. What does that do for us? It allows us to connect to our home network from outside of the boundaries of our home or small business using smart apps, uh, something new from Linksys, which are available for both iOS and Android devices. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to say no thanks and move on and get a look at the router's home screen. Linksys has provided a full set of tools and settings that can be accessed directly from the home screen. Smart Wi-Fi tools allows us to create and view a network map, create guest access accounts, set parental controls, prioritize the use of network resources, run speed tests, add and configure external storage, configure router settings for connectivity, undertake troubleshooting activities, configure our wireless, and configure the router's internal security settings. So let's get right to it and take a look at a network map. Since we only have one device currently connected to the router, all we see is information regarding that device. And if we click on the device, we can look at basic information about the device itself set parental controls for that device. You can also add a DHCP reservation, which is an advanced feature. You can also view the status of our guest network. At this point, there are no devices connected. We can set parental controls. In order to set parental controls, we must first enable parental controls. Select the device we would like to set parental controls on. And we can either allow full-time access to the internet from Rob's PC, disable 
internet access completely or allow internet access at specific times of the day. It should be done across the full week by different times per day. We can also block specific sites. Linksys does not provide the ability to block by category, but you can block individual sites. We can prioritize media usage across our network. We can enable that. Set high priority for things like Skype or any of these other applications. You can run a speed test. I'm on Fios, so I would expect this to be relatively high. And I can see right now that my speed has increased uh, fairly substantially over that provided, provided by my previous router. We can configure our external storage, we can share folder access, set up an FTP server, and configure a media server on our network here. We have fairly granular connectivity settings. This is our wireless connectivity settings. We can change our password. Again, set the router up for automatic firmware updates. Do manual firmware updates. Change our time zone. And turn our activity lights on the front of the router off and on as needed. The router supports both IPv4 and IPv6. And we can configure our MTU settings for optimal performance local network configuration settings. We can enable or disable our DHCP server, set static IP addresses for a DNS access, and set up DHCP reservations as needed. We have a number of advanced routing settings, we can enable or disable network address translation, and dynamic routing. We can also set whether Management of the router takes place over standard HTTP services or secure HTTP. I recommend HTTPS. That way sessions between your browser and the router are encrypted. We can turn universal plug and play off and on. I recommend disabling universal plug and play unless you have issues with some hardware or software in your network. Then you may go ahead and re-enable it as needed. Has some fairly robust troubleshooting features. It's a status of the devices on the network. We can create a report, which is fairly detailed, which is per device and, and also per wireless connection, i.e., on the 2.4 gigahertz side or 5 gigahertz side. Also, have a number of diagnostic features. We can ping internal or external hosts, run trace routes, reboot the router. Back up our router configuration, restore previous firmware, release and renew IP leases for both the IPv4 and IPv6 side, and reset the unit to its factory default settings. Here's our wireless configuration, again for both the 2.4 gig and 5 gigahertz sides. I have the ability to filter uh, devices by their MAC addresses, which is an advanced security feature, and to run Wi-Fi protected setup, which is a easy Wi-Fi connection feature implemented on most routers these days. Looking at our security configuration settings, we can enable or disable stateful packet inspection on both the IPv4 side and the IPv6 side. We have the ability to enable or disable IPsec pass-throughs, PPTP pass-throughs, that's point-to-point -point tunneling protocol used for most uh, VPN access, or L2TP pass-throughs. We can configure a demilitarized zone. We can do port forwarding um, across a, a range of devices and use dynamic DNS. Uh, service providers to support that. So that's basically uh, the feature set of the WRT1900AC. Things we didn't talk about in this demonstration that were asked about after our unboxing video are the fan. 
So the unit has a fan built into it that is surprisingly nearly silent. So if you're placing it in a, an area that's uh, used for other activities, such as a uh, home theater room or an area adjacent to, uh, to where you're trying to sleep, uh, don't be worried about or concerned about the noise of the fan. It's very, very quiet. So I highly recommend the WRT 1900AC at this point. Uh, it should be on shelves today. If you have any questions or would like uh, specific aspects of the router uh, demonstrated, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and uh, we'll try to produce more like this in the future. Thank you very much.